What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and in today's video we're going to talk about the Infernal Torch, which was added to Darkest Dungeon 2 recently. It's in the experimental branch of the game, if you've not played it and you're wondering where it's at. From what we understand, this should be added to the live version of the game sometime in January along with the other patch stuff that happened in December. Before we get started, if you enjoy the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts down below in the comments, make sure to check out the links in the description box for stuff like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon, which is all cool stuff that gives you awesome perks, and it supports the channel, so thank you so much. To make this video as easy to consume as possible, I have five pros and five cons for the Infernal Torch, and I'll give a quick description and rundown on how to get it and what it does. Getting the torch is pretty easy. Once you get your profile to level 20, it unlocks, and then every time you start a new run, it will be in the Academics Cache at the start of the Valley, which means every single run you'll get it and you'll be able to equip it to the Stagecoach at the first inn. And yes, you heard that part right, it is equipped to the Stagecoach, and once it is equipped to the wagon, it cannot come off, so make sure that you really want this thing before you put it on. And of course, if you're not going to use it, make sure to toss it because it's going to take up inventory space. What the Infernal Torch does once it is equipped to your wagon is it caps your torch at 1, or hope, or whatever it's called in this game. So you cannot raise your torch, and you cannot lower your torch from this point on, which means traveling will not lower it, assistance encounters will not raise it, and academic studies will not lower it, because that can happen sometimes. Since you are capped at 1 torch, you cannot get the 0 light cultist encounter, which is what happens when you hit 0 light is at the next torch tick because it ticks periodically when you're going down the road that's when you get ambushed by the cultists this will not happen now since you have the infernal torch which can be pretty nice if you're not trying to deal with that fight but it means you're also stuck perpetually with the low torch effects the most prominent of these effects is that the chance for negative affinity changes goes up on your side which means your teammates are more prone to yelling at each other and getting each other angry and getting the negative blue pips that made you feel bad, as well as giving the enemy ample chances to get their own bonuses at the start of battles. The other really important thing with the low torch setting is that the enemy gets a bonus resist to burn, blight, and bleed, which means that as good as damage over time is in this game, it becomes a bit harder to use it. You still should have some source of it on your team, but what I don't like is that makes characters like Runaway and Plague Doctor a bit worse because they're kind of dependent on damage over time. Certain skills, like these are still usable, don't get me wrong, but certain builds and skills like Backdraft or Malediction with Occultists and stuff like that gets much harder to pull off because the enemy's resistances are consistently just a bit higher across the board. Plus, they have more chances to get effects at the start of battle like Hail, which increases all of their resists on the enemy side. So because of this, direct damage is usually your best go-to in Infernal, but you still should have some form of damage over time just because it does things like checks death blow or just does consistent damage if it does stick. Now to talk about the pros of the Infernal Torch, and there are actually quite a few. Like I said, I'm keeping five for each side of this argument, but when you look at the Infernal Torch, it's like, well, this is just some kind of self-imposed challenge mode, so like, what what's good about it, you know? Well, let's talk about that. The first thing I like about the Infernal Torch in Darkest Dungeon 2 is that it's much easier to use than doing Torchless was in DD1. In DD1, you had to like not buy torches, you had to snuff your torch at the start of battle, and then to make things easier as a quality of life thing, you had to have a mod that you know disabled torch increase from skills and stuff, which is stuff we don't have to do now, thankfully, since it's just capped. We don't have to worry about assistance encounters or academic studies and stuff like that manipulating it, so that's very nice. And then, like I was saying, you don't have to manipulate your inventory or really care about the nodes on the road. You just put the torch on the wagon, and then it's good to go for the entire run. The second thing I like about the Infernal Torch is that it's constant, you know, it doesn't waver, doesn't go up and down, you don't have to, like I said, mess with it, it's just there. It's just capped at one, no up, no down for the entire run, and then it just becomes your normal state. Pro number three is that the torchless bump in Darkest Dungeon 2 is much better and just more manageable and smoother and it just feels better than Darkest Dungeon 1. In DD1, Torchless gave enemies bonus stress chance or bonus stress damage, I should say, increased crits and increased damage and stuff like that. Plus, I believe they got more accuracy as well, so dodge kind of had this back and forth thing where it became worse, but then it became better because if you could still dodge these really devastating hits, then dodge did have merit. So there's discussion going on with that, but I really feel the dodge was still beneficial in the first game. 
but I digress. What I mean to say is that straight up in DD1, Torchless was just BS. It was a horribly designed challenge mode. It was not meant to be played as such. I made a video on this specific topic that's gotten, you know, quite a few views and I still get people that don't understand what that video is actually talking about. So maybe I'm kind of circling back to that, but in Darkest Dungeon 1, Torchless was just an unbalanced mess. You were not supposed to play the entire game in that setting. People did, people beat the game in that setting, myself included, but you're not supposed to play it that way. And what I mean is in Darkest Dungeon 2, the game is balanced around the Infernal Torch. They might tweak what it does at some point in time, but what I'm trying to say is the Torchless difficulty is not nearly as ridiculous as it was in DD1. It doesn't feel like an unbalanced mess. It feels like there's actually some thought put into it, so it makes it more enjoyable. Number four, having the Infernal Torch capping your torch at one makes pathing through the game much easier. You don't have to fight to get to assistance encounters and trade off stuff. Like it's either assistance encounter or resistance to lower loathing and stuff like that. You can just take all the fights you want to and then you can go to the assistance encounters and take the evil options that can appear sometimes like, yeah, we're gonna murder this family for food and instead of losing 15 torch, you lose nothing. So your team is actually okay with that now and you still get all the benefits or you can treat assistance encounters as basically just like skipping fights if you need more time to recover. The other side of that is it makes academic studies much better. So academic studies are usually things that myself and I've seen other people that play the game, they usually don't spend a lot of time going to them just because either your whole team wants to leave or when you're picking what to do at the study, your team will choose like, yeah, we can get this trinket, but I'm gonna get three stress, a negative quirk potentially, and we're gonna lose 10 torch. And now you don't really have to worry about the minus torch part as much because it was probably the most negative implication that came out of those besides maybe some bad quirks or diseases. But being able to ignore the negative torch from the studies actually makes them much more appealing and I find myself going to them more frequently. The final pro of the Infernal Torch is that it is future-proofing the difficulty of the game. What I mean is it's a nice measure that's being put in place that long-term it will always be there and you can always use it to ramp up the difficulty at your choice whenever you feel that you want to add that to the run. What I mean by that is you know, maybe in a year, two years, five years, whatever's happening with this game at that point, it doesn't matter what challenge gets added to the game. It doesn't matter if we get like a, an Ascension style or a Pact of Punishment, stuff like that from other roguelike games that exist already. Anytime they add something to this game to make it harder, you can always put Infernal on top of it just to boost it a little bit more. So it will always be there, it'll always be an option, and it's just a nice, noticeable, but not like overbearing bump in difficulty that you can just put on top of everything for the rest of time. The cons of the Infernal Torch, we're gonna talk about five, so the five negative things, or the things I don't like the most about the Infernal Torch, we're gonna talk about those now. So the first is that as a self-imposed challenge, you know, you're thinking, okay, it's gonna cap my torch, I have to deal with that the whole time, but the other, thing that really sucks about it actually is that it takes a wagon slot. I don't know if they're gonna change this in the future. I kind of hope so. Like maybe give an extra slot that modifies torches because there's already a stagecoach upgrade that slows the burn rate of the torch. So it'd be nice if there's just a torch slot on the wagon. But the reason I'm saying that is because when you pick this challenge, you're doing it because you want to make the fights in the game statistically harder because that's what happens. But you're also sacrificing a wagon slot to do it and that's something that can have actually some very strong long-term consequences because you may need those extra things that the wagon can provide. However, you could also say, well, Shuffle, that's just part of the difficulty. You get the lower light in battle and then you also have to sacrifice a stagecoach slot which gives you a bit more difficulty just by doing that and that's intended and that's fine and that's cool and you can make that argument and I honestly wouldn't fight you on it. It's just something that's like, it's a personal thing for me. I don't like sacrificing the extra wagon slot for it, but I could see why it's still okay and people would like that. The second con is referring to Shambler spawn rates. This is a issue I had going back to Darkest Dungeon 1. This is part of the reason I said that Torchless in that game was an unbalanced mess and that is because the Shambler spawn rates were designed for you to be able to despawn Shambler in the first game and they took that out but they didn't change the spawn rates. So in this game Shambler I would say is an easier encounter. If you fight Shambler in the first region it's still gonna be tough don't get me wrong but once you get to like region two and three and stuff like that and you have a lot of player power some more trinkets and mastery and stuff 
Shambler gets pretty easy as long as he doesn't roll like Gargantuan, because I think Gargantuan Shambler is just an absolute nightmare in terms of a fight, because it's not just Shambler that gets the HP bump, it's the Clapper Claws too, which actually sucks a lot. So as long as you can dodge Gargantuan Shambler, then you still have to deal with the Shambler spawn rate. And in this, I wish that Shambler was capped at one road fight for the entire playthrough, but as it stands, you can fight Shambler multiple times. I believe Thick was talking about this to me in Discord one time where he got like two or three Shamblers in the same region, or someone else in Discord was talking about that too. Like, you just shouldn't be able to get multiple Shamblers, at least in the same region. Maybe in the same run, I guess, but like one per region, but I would prefer if it's just one per run. This excludes the Shambler fight at the academic study. If you still want to do that, that's fine. But overall, I think the Shambler spawn rate should be once per run. I'm dreadfully sorry because I forget who found the numbers for this, but someone did find the Shambler spawn rates in the game, and I don't remember exactly what the circumstances are and all that, but generally speaking, it's about 10% per road fight to spawn Shambler. That's actually quite high when you think about it. Which means, much like in DD1, you're trying to avoid road fights if you're not trying to fight Shambler. Number three for the con section is that the Infernal Torch has no real discernible benefit besides running it and being able to skip assistance encounter nodes. Sure, you can say, yeah, it's a challenge run. It's supposed to be, you know, for the challenge, you're not doing it to get other benefits like DD1 Torchless gave you bonus loot and stuff. And I get that. I totally get that. But I do wish that there was more reward for running Infernal in DD2. Like, I wish that you just got more chance at mastery points or the loot got better or something like that just to make it so if you're really taking that risk you're not just doing it specifically and purely just to punish yourself because sometimes it would be nice to run infernal and take the harder fights fight you know one or two shamblers and stuff but also get a lot of rewards on top of it so you can just feel really powerful in you know the five to six hours that you're playing for doing this challenge run i think that'd be actually pretty fun for the player but as it stands now there's no real in-game benefit for doing it especially because a lot of the low torch trinkets like from shambler and stuff aren't really that good I kind of jumped ahead there actually. So number four was supposed to be that, that the low torch trinkets aren't great in this game. Shambler gives you stuff like higher resists for bleeding stuff at low torch, which is, you know, whatever, because the game's already swimming in resist trinkets. I don't really want low torch trinkets to be stuff like, you know, bonus resists. I think one of the more interesting ones I found was that if your torch is under 40, then you get like 25% bonus HP. I think that came from Shambler too. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's okay. But overall, the low torch trinkets aren't fun. So I'm hoping they add more low torch trinkets that are cool and they're fun to use and you can get them easily if you're, I shouldn't say easily, but you can get them a little more commonly when you're playing Infernal just because that way, again, it kind of goes back to what I've been talking about in the con section. It just makes it more fun. It's not strictly as a punishment. It's like, yeah, I get this cool stuff that I never get to use because I'm using the Infernal Torch. My final issue with the Infernal Torch is that the power curve for the player kind of makes the Infernal Torch feel like it doesn't exist by the time you get to the end of the game. So when you start off, the first region is always going to be the hardest, just that's how the game works right now. The first region is the hardest one like every single time you do it. But the game runs into the same issue that it's been running into since launch, and that is since there is no scaling in the game to make the monsters harder as you progress, once you get some mastery points and some trinkets and you get to the second region or even the third region, by the time you get to the third region, you don't even notice. I've beaten Infernal twice. I've ran it twice. I've beaten it twice. So I, I have a small sample size, of course, but I really just didn't notice that I had Infernal Torch by the time I got to the third region. It's just like, yeah, that, this is what's happening. It's the normal state of things. I was still able to get positive relationships. I was still able to win fights quickly. I got very powerful. I got a lot of mastery and stuff like that. And... Honestly, once you just get like two or three mastered skills on every character and like one or two good trinkets across your party and at this point a boss trophy as well, you're just going to run over the game. Like you're going to steamroll it all the way up to the end of the game and then the final boss can still be challenging, but I'm not going to try and spoil that. But for those who have fought it, you can kind of understand why. Those are my thoughts on the Infernal Torch, and that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments, and thanks for watching. In terms of stuff coming up for gameplay and videos and all that, I am going to do another Infernal Torch run and upload that. Or I'm going to upload my second one. It's on YouTube. I just have to, like, 
you know, do all the back end stuff and then get that going. And then I want to make other videos like talking about Runaway because I don't think she's that good right now. So I want to address it much like the same way I did the Grave Robber video a month ago or whatever it was. So those are the things I'm focusing on in the near future. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.